Hi everybody! Thank you so much uh, for coming to my channel and checking out my video. I'm Megan. I'm the Faithful Fibromyalgia Warrior. And for those of you who have not watched my videos before, I like to talk about mainly um, living a keto life and living a life of faith as a Christian. So hopefully what I share today is going to be helpful and encouraging, perhaps inspire you guys, um, maybe It'll be something that gives you some ideas of how to approach things, but um, I do this because my life has been incredibly transformed, and I don't want to keep it to myself. It's My life is so great, I can't help but want to share uh, with all of you. So, I guess starting off, what do I mean by a keto lifestyle? So, for those of you uh, who are here because you want to hear about uh, being ketogenic or living in a keto lifestyle. Basically, I look at it as a way of life. It's not just a diet like I'll try this for 30 days and see how it goes and then I'll go back to my old way of eating. You know, people ask me, don't you miss desserts and sweets and um, all the cakes and pastries? And the truth of the matter is I did in the beginning, okay? I never thought I could give up millionaire squares, which is like shortbread base with caramel filling and chocolate on top. I never thought I could give those up with, um, you know, the eggnog spice lattes and all the other sweet things until I did. And now I don't want them. That That's the point is you do, if you keep up with it, if you're say at the point where you've given up sugar and you're laying off the carbs, um, and you know, the easy ones, which is like, you know, your breads and pastas and rice, um, the hidden ones are, of course, the whole wheat things. Any Anything that has grains in it has carbs in it, just so you know. So even if it's gluten-free, it's not carb-free, and it's likely not sugar-free either. So in the beginning, I found that very challenging, okay, to let go of my sweet tooth because that was my go-to whenever I was feeling anxious or out of control, was to turn to something sweet comfort food and a, and a great big coffee uh, filled with whipped cream and everything else. And of course, it was horrible for me, you know, and I figured once a week or if I'm in under stress, which I felt all the time, because when I started trying to go keto it was back in um, May of 2020 when we were coming out of the first wave of COVID and I was weighing in at 180 pounds. And I'm only five foot five, okay? And because of my fibromyalgia, because of my back injury, my arthritis, I don't work out, I can't go to the gym or things like that. So the whole move more, eat less wouldn't apply to me, at least the move more part. Um, I was bulimic for a good 30 odd years. And so I know about restrictive eating and purging and binging and, um, that didn't work either. In fact, it screwed up my metabolism. And then finding out I had an underactive thyroid, hypothyroidism, that I was put on medication for, um, didn't help matters. So my body was basically fighting against itself. And carrying all the extra weight um, not only made me bloated and in pain and uncomfortable, and put ex extra weight on my joints and made everything hurt constantly. Um, I felt like I lived in this permanent fog. I would like to think I'm a fairly intelligent person, but I tell you what, I had a hard time just remembering what I ate in the mornings for breakfast that same day. And I could easily have told one of my sons to do something for me and then told, and then I would completely forget that I'd asked them or that it needed to be done. And, um, and that was frustrating. You know, my husband would say, hey, make sure you call this person or get that sorted. I'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And then I would forget, oh, you might, you might see our, our spaniel Bertie pop up here and there. He likes to, uh, <laughs> likes to photo bomb, um, or like video bomb. Uh, so if you see little splotches of kind of beige and off white, that's, that's Bertie in the background. Um, so my sister-in-law um, had Hashimoto's and she did not want to be put on any medication. 
she found a paleo approach to food, which helped her. Uh, she does not have any food intolerances or, ins or sensitivities like I do. So she recommended a specific book, which I got on my Kindle. And my husband and I decided, yes, we need to get, we need to find a way to lose weight. The problem was because it was paleo, there were nuts involved, seeds involved, um, lots of leafy greens. And I can't tolerate any of that stuff, which I found out the hard way. Um, so it wasn't working for me. It was making me feel worse. And I just thought to myself, I'm going to find something. How do I lose weight without having to do massive exercise? Right? Because I thought it's not possible. Well, in fact, it was. Um, I found all sorts of videos on, you know, intermittent fasting and eating windows, which led me to keto or the ketogenic protocol, um, as it should be called. And really the videos that impacted me the most were the ones by Go, Car Go Keto with Casey. That's Casey Durango. Uh, she is in North Carolina. And Carnivore Yogi, which is Sarah Kleiner. And I believe she is in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. And these two women just had, they, they were my heroes. You know, just their stories, their, their own struggles with um, addiction or, you know, health concerns. And yet they turned to a form of keto and it worked for them. And I thought, well, hey, why not me? And the thing I learned quickly, first off, is that there is no one size fits all. That is a lie. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as one size fits all or even one size fits most. You know, I think especially when it comes to our health, um, physically and also mentally, we are all created uniquely in God's image. God does not make mistakes. But when we have challenges, I think it's so that we realize we need someone in our life to help us. Right. The only human that was ever perfect was Jesus. I hate to break it to you guys. That's not me. I uh, have never been able to walk on water unless it's ice that's frozen. And that was a long time ago. You know, I, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. And so figuring out how to help ourselves with our physical health, our mental and spiritual health, there is no one size fits all prescription. I just want to share what's helped me and that maybe something from that will be able to help you. You know, um, when I started watching Casey's videos, and, and there were some other ones that were in there that were far more scientific, and the one thing I, I got out of it was keep your total carbs to no more than 20 grams per day, and they should come from non-starchy vegetables. Now, that's all well and good, but non-starchy vegetables are, are, are the vegetables that I cannot tolerate in the first place, like broccoli, cauliflower, onions, Brussels sprouts, etc. because they have IBS because they are high gas producers. So if you can tolerate the non-starchy vegetables, and that's maybe like one fistful of them raw, two of those a day, if you like them. Our bodies don't require carbs to function. That's a misconception that I learned as well. The brain feeds on glucose. However, God is so amazing that when he made our bodies, he designed us so that we can, in fact, burn the fat on our bodies and convert it into glucose for the brain through a process called gluconeogenesis. And so we actually don't require carbs. If people like them and they keep them to a minimum, and it's from non-starchy sources of vegetables, <clears throat> fantastic, go for it. I can't do that because I can't tolerate those things to begin with. But what I would also say is that um, other than that, eat healthy fatty sources of protein. So I'm talking like the, the, so the, the animal, oh, there goes Birdie the animal sources of protein that come with the fat. So that could be bacon or sausages or pork chops with the fat trim or lamb chops with the fat trim or fatty ground beef that you make into a burger or meatloaf or chili or you just 
fry it up in a pan and chuck in a few egg yolks. Um, eat that stuff until you feel satiated, not till you feel full. And believe me, that that's a bit of a trick in the beginning, figuring out when you're full, when you're stuffed versus you're satiated. Like, I feel awesome. And I don't need or want anything else to eat right now. I'm satisfied. That's that's the point you want to reach. And as you cut out the carbs and you feed your body fat, what I learned this, right? What it means is your body is being trained to burn fat. So once it starts to, to rely on fat for fuel, you'll find that it's when you aren't eating, when you're satisfied, yeah, and what you've eaten keeps you satisfied, eventually your brain is going to start going, wait a minute, I need fat for fuel. And it will start to tap into the body fat you're already carrying and that will start to burn and you will start to lose weight. Now, I don't know, I can't explain the exact scientific mechanisms and chemical reactions. I, I'm not a scientist, I don't know. Um, but I know that uh, Carnivore Yogi has had a number of really, really, really great certified medically, like board certified doctors and specialists on her different, um, on her different uh, YouTube posts and webcams and podcasts. So definitely check out her channel if you want something a lot more scientific-y. Scientific-y, that's my word for the day. So as I started to lose weight, and I started to feel healthy. I couldn't believe, I, I still have a hard time believing that I've lost all this weight. Okay, I'm down to like one, one, 115 pounds. I think I've lost like 65 pounds or whatever it is. You know, which is a lot. Um, and I've kept it off. And as your body, as you have less body weight, you don't need as much energy to fuel the body that you're left with. <clears throat> Therefore, you aren't as hungry. Therefore, you don't have to eat as much. And that's how you maintain your new healthy weight. But it was more than just feeling excited about, I get to buy cute clothes for the first time in my life and feel comfortable in them. I get to wear something that's cute that I couldn't do even as a teenager. And I felt my skin getting healthier, my nails getting healthier, my hair getting healthier by cutting out all the crap in my diet. And the brain fog started to lift and some of the pain started to ease off. Now, I still have arthritis. I still deal with chronic back pain and I'm not going to be building stuff in my backyard. I'm not going to be lifting weights at the gym anytime soon because I can't. However, I have more energy. You know, some of the things I'm also doing, which are things that uh, Carnivore Yogi, Sarah Kleiner, talks about in a lot of her posts and her videos, is making sure that I have a circadian rhythm that is healthy, which means I get up in the morning, I look out at, um, I don't always see the sun rise, but when the day starts, I get out, I look up at the sky, I just stand there in the moment, um, I enjoy the peace and the surroundings of Oh, there's Birdie again. Of I've got, you know, God is around me and I just stop and pause and I, oh, here he is. Hello, Birdie, with this ball. And um, I just listen to the bird chatter and the wind blowing. And I often take off my slippers and I'll just stand on the grass with my bare feet and just ground myself because <clears throat> there's like electrons in the soil and they connect through your body that way. It just, ah, there's a whole bunch of videos on it, but it, it helps with overall physical energy um, and it works it really works it it sends signals through the eye to the body that hey it's time to wake up now and I'm up and one of the things I started to do was within a couple of hours of waking up I try to make sure that I eat my my um, my breakfast which is fatty ground beef with a bit of salt egg yolk and streaky bacon I try to eat that within the first couple of hours because it signals the body hey, start processing this. She needs energy because it's daytime. You know, I make sure that I'm eating dinner as much as possible. I eat dinner before it gets dark, uh, before it's too late in the day because the body expends energy digesting and processing food. So if you're eating at nine o'clock at night, 
instead of getting that restful sleep a couple of hours later, your body is still probably digesting and processing the food you ate late at night. That's probably a big reason why they say you should never eat late at night or after a certain period, after a certain time. And I get why, you know. But for me, it's just because by the time it's 10, you know, I've, I've actually got these uh, clip-on blue light blocking um, lenses that go over my glasses. So it doesn't affect because these are bifocals, if you will. Not that you can tell, but they are. Um, they're, they're very focals. And so these little clip-ons go over my lenses. And that way, when I'm reading my Kindle at night, I'm blocking up the blue light. I'm blocking up the blue light from our laptop or from my phone. And I find it makes a huge difference. So even if I'm doing that, I still get a good night's sleep because I can't hold a regular book for a long period of time. It, it, it hurts my wrists and my arms too much. So <clears throat> I have a, a special triangle shaped pillow that my Kindle goes on and it stacks up on a few pillows on my lap and I just have to swipe the pages to turn. So for me, if I'm settling myself and I want to read at night, it does have to be my Kindle but I will often put on my blue light blockers. Um, and that's something I've learned from <clears throat> uh, from Carnivore Yogi. And again, she's got all kinds of videos about this stuff. Definitely check her out. But that's what worked for me. That doesn't mean it's something that might will work for you. I think it probably is worth trying, you know. She's got a whole red light therapy system going. I don't have that because I don't have the money for it. It's too expensive, but I get out every single day and I try to be outside every day for at least an hour. You know, as I'm taking my electric chair through town, even when it's overcast, I can feel, you know, the red light from the sun that's healing and therapeutic is always coming down on us. Vitamin D and all that. It may not be as strong, obviously, because it's not full summer yet, but I feel energized when I get outdoors. So get outdoors as much as you can. Even if it's cloudy, the red light's still coming through and um, it's, it's good for you. But what it made me realize as well, coming back to May of 2020. So by August of 2020, I had lost about 40 pounds. <clears throat> I was feeling quite good. And my whole thought at the time was, I feel so good. I just want to keep eating like this because why wouldn't I? And whether I lose any more weight or not, whatever, I was, I was at um, 140 pounds and it was on the edge of what was considered healthy. But, you know, given that I can't exercise and my, um, my other medical issues, that was a weight that my GP was, would have been happy with. I just figured, ah, I'm just going to keep eating the way I'm eating because I feel better. I feel like my body has been cleansed. And as it turned out, <clears throat> I ended up losing another, what, um, 25 pounds just by eating healthy without any effort, just lots of, you know, kept my water going. Now, I have to tell you that because I have IBS and I have a leaky gut and I have food sensitivities, I do take digestive enzymes after I eat. They have um, peppermint oil in them. And that helps keep the IBS symptoms under control. And I take um, um, beef liver supplements, unfatted. Um, I'm trying those. I take those up to three times a day um, with, with if I'm eating, right, with my meals. Usually it's twice a day because I usually only eat twice a day because I'm usually only hungry twice a day. But that's just what I do. You don't have to do that, okay? I have... Um, issues, like I said, leaky gut and all that. So this is why I'm taking these supplements. I lost weight without them. This is for me, this is to help me with maintaining and also just getting in those extra vitamins that I wanna make sure I'm not missing out on. Um, and last time I tried to have liver, I gave myself food poisoning. So supplement is the way to go for me, okay? But that's what that worked for me that may not work for you it might be worth a try though you know um as far as the beef liver it, it's give it a try you know you may find that it 
helps you have more energy and it's it just it's a good boost of vitamins and nutrients um, for those who want to get an organ meat and cannot stand the thought of eating it never mind preparing it okay it's I figure it's a good solution um, <clears throat> and as I say it's been really helping with um, um, <clears throat> my uh, the health of my hair and my nails um, yeah so and my skin's improving uh, getting smoother as well so all good things um, I find now I say that keto right because carnivore is is just a subset of the ketogenic protocol there are some people who because being keto is uh, again 20 grams total of carbs per day from non-starchy sources, so non-starchy vegetables, which is like maybe two fistfuls of uncooked vegetables a day. And then, of course, you cook it up. Um, you can have full-fat dairy in limited quantities, so perhaps a couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise or sour cream or cream in your coffee or a bit of cheese. Don't do all of those things at once <clears throat> if you can tolerate them or cooking with butter. If you can't tolerate dairy, you don't have to have that. Um, other than that, it's eating healthy sources of animal protein, so meat that comes with the fat, as I've already explained, um, and eating until you feel satiated, not till you're stuffed, till you're satisfied and you feel like, you know, I don't think I need to eat anything else for quite some time. And for me, I, it was like, honestly, it may sound silly, but for me, it was like a miracle because I never thought I'd ever be able to lose the, first of all, the weight that was creeping up on me with my thyroid not working properly with fibromyalgia and brain fog and chronic pain and arthritis and everything else. I thought that's it. I'm <clears throat> going to be like this forever. And to find out that that is in fact not the case, wow. And <clears throat> when my brain started to clear and I saw my health improve, I knew, I knew that God was trying to work in my life to help me. I, I don't ask for my physical illnesses or mental health concerns or any of that to be taken away. Why? Because I believe that God wants to do something great with me through those things. So I can maybe help other people who are also struggling, you know, with trying to recover from eating disorders, with anxiety, with depression, um, with chronic illness and pain. So I'm okay that I, I deal with these things. I don't, I'm not upset with God, which might seem crazy. I'm not though. Totally not upset with God. I see it as a definite blessing because, hey, if him working in my life through this can help others, fantastic right so I'm not upset about any of that like at all but what I realized as I was able to actually have mental mental clarity instead of this constant fog was that God was working in my life he was calling me back to him and it was time to stop trying to control it myself and realize I need God I tried everything by myself, my way, and it didn't work. God let me discover keto to help clear the brain fog, alleviate some of my pain, help me lose weight, help me get healthier, help me feel better. Why? So I can focus and go, wow, you know what? God is in control. He is trying to help me change things in my life that need a change. I need to smarten up and listen to him. And that's around the time when I realized, you know what? I need to reconnect with God. I need my relationship with him. I need to get back on track because the way I've been behaving, of, of just trying to control it all myself and ignoring him, it, it's clearly not working. And so for me, that's why I like to talk about living a keto lifestyle as a Christian. And some people might think, well, how can you do both? Easy. I mean, God provided the animals on this planet for consumption, for our consumption, you know. And as long as they are 
ethically sourced and renewably farmed, which really is not such a big issue over here in the UK. I know in the States, there's like feedlots and all sorts of stuff like that going on. But over here, we're pretty lucky, you know. But um, I, somebody else who's out on YouTube has this saying, which is, um, eat the meat, save the humans. I agree with that. And the thing I'm so glad about for me is I feel so amazing and so alive and I'm so thankful. And I'm just reminded every day that I am lucky, I'm blessed. And what I have is an amazing gift from God. Yes, I'm a Christian. I know I'm going to heaven one day. I know I'm saved. And that is, I'm not, not to make light of that, that is fantastic. But he has helped improve my life enough that I can enjoy what I have on this earth. I can enjoy my marriage with my husband, I, 24 years. I can enjoy watching, you know, my, my sons who are young adults now sort of move on and progress in their lives. I can enjoy that regardless of the chronic pain or inflammation that might be there. I can cope now. It's not gone. I'm not, you know, but then there's no promise that it would ever go completely. But it's gone enough that I can feel the energy to make this video for you guys, that I can want to share my experiences and say, hey, try this. It might help. So if you're a Christian, remember, please, I know it's hard. I know sometimes it sucks. I know sometimes the pain is unbearable, but there's a reason. There's a reason we're going through this. We don't know why, but that God wants to work on our lives. Okay. I don't know what the reason is. I, I don't, I honestly do not, but I'm confident that there's a plan and you know, just cause I don't know what the plan is. Doesn't mean there isn't one. And just because I might want to control the plan doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know, there's a saying, if you really want to make God laugh, tell him what your plans are. Right. But what I can say is, here, here's my plan to share how thankful I am that I am a Christian and I'm not just, but I'm a, a Christian who is living her faith daily and I wasn't for a long time. It's not enough to just believe, right? So here I am a Christian trying to live out her faith, full of joy, full of gratitude, um, thankful for everything in my life, both the challenges and the victories because without both you know if all I had was 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 an easy life without challenge well then I, I wouldn't have anything really to be thankful for would I but I do and honestly the keto life has helped me with that and you know some people might laugh but honestly I know that God led me to find the videos by carnivore yogi and go keto with Casey it was not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. I found those videos after going through lots and lots of other ones that were out there. I found these two women on YouTube who have inspired me, who have helped me keep things simple. You know, for me, I am on the carnivore side of the ketogenic protocol is that I avoid all carbs. I just, I don't eat them or I eat minimal of them. Um, and I feel amazing. I feel great. I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Um, but they're the ones who've helped inspire me. And, you know, as far as having a good circadian rhythm and schedule for the day and getting good sleep at night and why it's important and being outside and the blue light blockers that I got and just all of these little tips have helped me. And what they've done is they've given me a sleep cycle that's really good and really deep. I wake up refreshed, I have energy, my pain is manageable, my brain fog is almost non-existent, not completely, but it's far, 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 far less than what, I, what it ever was. And all of these things, God is having a hand in. And so, yeah, I just, I, I want to share with other people how great it is to be a, to be a Christian, living a keto lifestyle.
I know people who are Christians who um, struggle with a lot of health conditions because they have still got such a huge, vast amount of carb uh, intake. And it's processed stuff. And they don't realize how bad it is for them or they don't want to believe it. Um, but it's true. You know, it's out there. Seeds and grains and cereals, they were essentially were grown to feed livestock. They were never originally intended for us to eat. And yet we eat them and consider them healthy. Lies from the grain industry, really. But you'll have to research that for yourself. But um, so, yeah, it's I, I tell you what I eat every day because it's what I love. It's what my body craves. You know, sometimes we'll have shawarma or we'll go out for a burger and obviously not eat the bun um, or meatloaf or steak if it's a fancy night out. But for the most part, it's fatty, fatty, fatty ground beef with some strips of extra crispy bacon that I crumble up. But when I cook the meat, I add in one or two egg yolks, a bit of salt, fry it in the pan, sprinkle it with bacon, and done. That's what I eat. And by the way, when you're frying beef on a frying pan, scoop everything onto your plate, including the rendered, like the beef fat, because that's, you know, we're going to help you be satiated. So eat that as well. You know, you got to eat all of it. Because if you're not, if you're, if you're separating out the fat, um, you can't, then you, you're missing the point, right? So yeah. Anyways, that's what I eat regularly. And I feel fantastic. And it's given me the clarity to pray to God and meditate on how amazing he is and how great his works are and how he's using all of us as a group to help each other. Anyways, I'm rambling now, you guys. I'm just, I'm so filled with thankfulness and gratitude. Um, I had to share. I had to share. But again, there is no such thing as one size fits all. However you want to express your faith that's what works for you and that's fantastic do it go for it um you know christian or not however whatever kind of faith you have go for it you know that's that's great you know I, i'm not sorry i'm not trying to sound condescending in any way i i honestly mean it whatever helps you calm your mind and get to a pay a place of of peace because that will help with reducing anxiety that will help with reducing any sorts of depression it doesn't mean it will fix it fully okay if you need to take medication for it that's okay I do and I'm not ashamed to say it if we need extra help so be it you know God created the doctors who invented the antidepressants for a reason you know if we need them that's okay that helps us no problem. Um, if you're on the medications and you want to come off them, please don't just suddenly quit taking them. Please work with your health practitioner um, because it could be really bad if you just suddenly stop taking your prescriptions and your medications. Withdrawals can be really, really bad. So please don't do that. But you may be at a place where you feel so light and clear-minded and positive that you may be able to reduce or even stop taking antidepressants. Lots, lots of people who have been, um, who, have, who have stayed on the ketogenic protocol have been able to do that. So that might help, but please, 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 please talk to your GP, nurse practitioner, whoever it is. Don't just suddenly stop taking your medications, okay? You may have to ease off slowly, but that's, that's what I wanted to share is I hope some of this is encouraging. I hope some of this is helpful. I hope you'll see that, you know what, if I could follow this and find so much improvement in my health spiritually and physically, then hopefully it'll help you too. Um, I really am so glad to have all of you who have joined. Um, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, it would be great if you did. Let's Let's support each other. Let's be a community, okay? Um, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate all your help uh, as far as your encouragement, your your feedback, your comments. It's always, always appreciated. 
Uh, any questions, any thoughts, let me know, and I will definitely try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Other than that, guys, um, I'm using my hands a lot today. <laughs> Sorry. Otherwise, um, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.